Hello again, Sue here from Sue's Dog Blog Life Kitchen and I hope you're all well and not going too mad with all the uh, weird rule changes and lockdowns and wacky living that we're now doing. Anyway, <laughs> on a lighter note, I would just like to show you how to make a nice Christmassy cake today. So this is going to be one of several Christmas cakes I'm going to be making. This is a traditional Dundee cake. My partner likes Dundee cake, so today I'm making a Dundee cake. Uh, I'm going to make it and we're going to eat it. <laughs> but it is very similar to a Christmas cake. Um, just a little bit lighter because you don't use um, dark sugar, you use light sugar. Um, so I've got all the ingredients laid out in front of me and I've already weighed everything. There was only a couple of things that I was going to show you how to do um, and the rest of it is already done. So basically all we're going to do is put it together. So this recipe today is coming out of this book which I've used before for another recipe. What did I make? The half pound cake came out of this recipe which is British food. It's a really nice old book, the Dairy Book of British Food. It's got loads and loads and loads of recipes in it. Um, and I do like the, the Dundee cake. And this book has that one in. So this is the reason why I've chosen this book today. So I've got all of the ingredients, which there are quite a lot of. But it's not a very difficult process once you've weighed everything out. So I have a couple of changes, as always. Um, I will just run through the recipe with you and if you want the ingredients please leave me a comment below and I will put the ingredients up if you can't keep up with them on the actual video today. So this is a classic rich and buttery fruit cake with a characteristic pattern of blanched almonds on top. Right, I'm not using blanched almonds on top today, I'm using whole almonds with the skin on but you can blanch them and take the skins off i mean i'm actually blanching some here um, in some hot water at the moment because we're supposed to chop up some almonds as well so i just wanted to show you how to do it right so what you need to do uh, named after the town where it originated in dundee obviously dundee was Famous first and foremost for its marmalade, which used to feature in the recipe. Ah, well, I never knew that, but now it doesn't have marmalade. You have candied peel as well um, instead, I suppose. Yeah, orange peel. Candied orange peel. Anyway, so that's that. I never knew that. So anyway, let's crack on. So instead of using four ounces of currants, four ounces, well that's 100 grams of seedless raisins and 100 grams of sultanas. I only had a small amount of mixed fruit left, about 100 grams, and the other 200 grams are made up of sultanas today, okay? But you can use the right ratio, just buy a bag of mixed fruit actually, make your life a lot easier. And then you need 100 grams of the candied orange peel. So I do actually have that separate, but you can just buy mixed fruit with the peel in it, um, which would be fine. And then you need 25 grams of blanched almonds chopped. So I have my almonds here. So we need to do these first before we progress. I just wanted to show you how to take off the skins off of almonds. So all you do is you just put them into some hot water and then just slide them between your thumb and forefinger and the skin just slides off just like that. And that's blanched almonds by the way. So you just take your almonds and you squeeze it like that and the skin comes off. Really, 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 really simple. So that's how you blanch almonds. But make, wait until the water's cooled down before you stick your fingers in it, obviously. But these ones we're chopping up. So we don't need to uh, have these whole. And then I'm just going to use these whole ones to decorate the top with. Because you put um, like marmalade or 
honey or something on the top to glaze it once you've finished anyway. So it looks all pretty and I like the skins on. But in, inside the cake you don't really want the skins on. So, or you don't have to put almonds on it at all if you don't want to. But then it would be a, a, um, a Dundee cake really because it does have almonds on it. <laughs> Just make sure we got them all. Nearly. I should have done most of them. I just wanted to show you how to do them in case you didn't know. It's really, really, really simple. So you don't have to go out and buy blanched almonds, which probably can be quite more expensive a lot of the time. Just buy the almonds with the skins on. You know, it's, it's not very, it doesn't take very long. See, I've done them all now. Hello again. Sorry, I got a bit way late there. <laughs> a bit like I am now. Cut. <laughs> Can I have a cup of tea, bud? What are you doing, a cakey? Nice, cakey. Nice cake yeah, Dundee. You like Dundee? Yeah, I love yeah. Dundee. Here you go, babe. Put water in. I'm just. Uh... No. Oh. Some water. Oh, I can, I can do that. Babe, I wouldn't hand you the kettle the way I did if it was boiling hot water. I wouldn't be able to touch it. <laughs> That, that would going. be weird if you just, uh, if I was getting you to do that part. Oh, what's nothing, nothing. What's happening with Oh, I thought might be. I've got the uh, thing in the oven, the uh, pork. And then you'll have to wait a little while for the cake. Hello again, Sue back again from Dog Prob My Kitchen. Having a few little issues today, things going wrong. <laughs> Still, my partner popping in. Still, never mind, that's part of the, the name of the game. Anyway, so what I wanted to do was grind up some um, the the almonds. So I've put the almonds in here in my grinder, actually. Um, the chopper I was going to use, I've got no clue how to use it. So I won't be using that. So I'm just going to use what I know which is this grinder, I know this, so I'm just going to use this just to quickly grind them up. Oh, for God's sake, I'm trying to wipe the spoon. Oh, it has to be a certain spoon. Right. Right, that'll do. We've got a few bits of almond in there, but still, never mind. This is why you need to chop them up, really. But still, we've got half ground, half whole. Anyway. Never mind, let's crack on. So, anyway, I have a nice little glass of uh, sherry here to get into the festive mood because um, I'm going to be adding a bit of sherry to the cake, actually. Um, this is just a uh, Tanner's um, a Monte Lardo sherry. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, cheers, Merry Christmas. Ah, my favourite sherry is Harvey, Harvey's Bristol Cream, which I will have to buy some next week. Anyway, glasses, right. So, we've gone through the um, fruit, so, and the blanched almonds, we've just done those. And then you need 275 grams of plain flour, which I've already weighed out into this bowl here. And you need 225 grams of butter, which I've weighed out and put on this dish. You need 225 grams of soft brown sugar, which I've got in this dish here. Then you need finely grated rind of one orange and finely grated rind of one lemon. So I have my orange and lemon here, and I have my grater here. So I'm just going to grate them when I need to put them in. And then you need four eggs. So I have my eggs, I've already cracked them, they're in this bowl. And then you need whole blanched almonds to decorate. So as I explained to you before, I have these whole almonds here that I'm not blanching, I'm just going to put them on with the skins on, okay? But you can blanch them if you want. Anyway, then you need to grease and line an 8 inch cake tin. So this is an 8 inch cake tin. And the way I grease and line my tins is really simple. What I do is I collect all these 
butter wrappers which usually have butter left on them like so and what I will do is just put it face down into the tin and this acts as a grease proof paper as well and your cake will not stick to this you will just get your cake out it's really good and it works so you just get the packets like this so I have a whole bag of them here um, with the butter that we use and you just it doesn't matter if you overlap them so just um, and they're already greased so you don't have to grease them and this is what I always use now I always use this instead of using parchment paper just use these so if you like butter like we do we just buy butter and you can use um, large large um, papers or uh, margarine papers as well if you like margarine uh, I hate margarine I don't ever put margarine in my cakes I like real food margarine is not real it's not real so we're using four of those to decorate to decorate to line our eight inch cake tin so it doesn't matter there you go done like that see all lined okay and that's it that's all you have to do it's so simple you don't have to measure it all with a you know stencil and all that nonsense just do just do things easy that's my motto cooking should be fun shouldn't be like a chore right so you just put that to one side Right, and now to put the ingredients together. So, first of all, another swig of sherry. Cheers. Okay, so first of all, so we've done the tin. So what you need to do now is mix the fruit. Well, we have to do this in a big bowl because... Um, I mixed, I, I had already weighed all the ingredients in this big bowl. So you're going to mix fruit peel and chopped almonds with flour. Okay, so we're going to put the fruit in, the peel in, the chopped almonds in. Like so. It's nice to have a bit of um, like bigger almonds in it. Gives it more of a crunch, I think. Anyway, you know. So it's nice to have sort of chopped bits and then the bigger bits. It just makes it a bit more interesting. And then the flour. So put the flour in. So that's that. And then I presume you mix this up. I don't think it's very difficult. Just mix that up. So mix that together. I think we probably have to put in the uh, the orange and lemon rind as well. Let me just check. Uh, yes, cream the butter. Oh yes, in mix of, So in the other bowl, we cream the butter, sugar, and orange and lemon rind. Okay. So we'll do that in a sec. So that's that bit done. So we just put that there and then in this bowl we'll put the sugar the butter and I suppose we mix this up and the orange and lemon rind so I'm just going to use this rinder <laughs> I'm going to have to move my glasses. 
tears are falling off my face. Some of my bread videos have gone drastically wrong. But now I seem to have perfected bread. I actually make it in a bread maker now. Um, which really works. I never ever thought I could make bread. I made some today. And every two days I make a loaf of bread. And it smells amazing. Oh, it's gorgeous. And we actually have the bread maker in our bedroom at the moment because it's so cold everywhere in this building. And it's obviously warm in our bedroom. So this morning, Simon's put it on. And then about 10 o'clock, there was a wonderful aroma of bread in the bedroom. Gorgeous. Anyway, so I think what we do now is we have to mix this together. So I have actually got my um, whisk here. So... Here we go. Gently does it. Because the butter's not broken up yet, so I don't want to put it on too high, then the butter will go crazy. Together until pan fluffy, gradually beating the eggs, and then you fold in the fruit. Hmm. Not sure how we can do that. I put it in the wrong bowl. Right, so we're going to put in the eggs slowly. One at a time. You could do this in a food processor. It would be a bit quicker. Okay. I've got a mixer down there, but I really can't be bothered to get it out. I like doing it the traditional way. Hand mixers are great. Coming together nicely now. I'm going to have to fold this into that big bowl because it's not going to fit in this little bowl. So we're going to have to do it opposite to what it says. And hopefully it won't cause any concern. Hopefully not. Anyway, that's basically it once we've done this. And then you just put it in the uh, container and put it in the oven. So not very difficult. So what it says next is that you've got to fold this into that. <laughs> I think I may have put it in the wrong bowl to start with, don't you? So I think we're going to have to... Um, hmm. Yeah, I need another bowl really. <laughs> Hello again. Right, I have just uh, transferred transfer the eggy and butter mixture into this bowl because we need to put this in here not the other way around because you need to keep this light so you just need to add it a little bit at a time so you add your flour your dry ingredients your wet ingredients a little at a time okay because remember you've just whisked up your eggs and you don't really want the air to go out so you just do it gently like that Preferably with one of these spatulas because you can get underneath and move it round nice and gently, okay? So just keep adding a bit of your dry mixture into your wet mixture, okay? And be gentle here because you don't want to lose the air. There's no point in whisking loads of air into your eggs and then you just beat it out of it because then your cake will be not very um, light, light and airy, be sort of non-light and airy. Okay, so you just do that, and as you see the mixture going in like that, just add a bit more until your mixture's all gone. So I think I can add the last bit now. That's it. Okay, so just one more time. Just keep stirring it like that until you can't see the flour anymore and then you'll know it's completely mixed in properly. But don't rush this bit, try and do it gently. Because it's important that your mixture is mixed up well, but just don't beat it, okay? Because you've done the beating, which was the, <coughs> just beating the eggs. But you don't want to beat the flour, okay? So this is really important for a nice textured cake. 
otherwise it could come out like a lump of concrete which would be good for um, you know breaking windows and stuff but maybe not for eating <laughs> might not be so good for your teeth anyway so as you can see that is actually mixed in now and what I was going to do here, it doesn't say to do it, but I'm going to do it, is just add a little bit of sherry. Um, you can also feed your cake. So I'm just putting a little bit in because obviously we don't want it too wet. So I put in about, you know, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon of sherry. Just gives it that nice taste, but you don't have to do that. That's just my preference, okay? But you don't have to do that. You can just leave it out. Because you don't actually add any liquid to this. Um, just the eggs. Right, so as you can see, that's a nice sort of dough. So what we're going to do is, we've got our cake tin here. And you literally just put it in the cake tin. You don't want to mess around with it too much. So just get it in the cake tin. Then you can smooth it out a little bit. Just make sure you get it all out. You don't want to waste anything. So that's it. Good. Get out the cake. I like these spatulas. They're really good. You don't get any waste with them. You can just scoop up everything. Right, so. And then use your finger to get it off of the spatula, like so, like that, and then if you like the taste of it, you can always lick your fingers, okay, there, so just smooth out the top, and so that's what I'm doing now, just smooth it out, And then we're going to put the almonds on it, so it looks all nice and decorative. I'm not sure how long this takes to cook, I'll have to have a look. My oven's already on, I've got some of my dinner in there, cooking, which is smelling rather nice right now. Right, so I've smoothed it out the best I can, that'll do. Doesn't have to be perfection. I'm not a perfectionist, by the way. Not, not for this sort of thing. Sometimes I am. Depends what it is I'm doing. <laughs> but for something like this, I'm not. So, because we're going to cover up the top now with the almonds. Okay. So I've got my bowl of almonds here, and I don't know if you know what a Dundee cake looks like. It has like a nice display of almonds around it, which I will show you. So you just place your almonds around it. I'll show you in a minute. Probably speed up this bit because this might be a bit boring. and then around until you filled up the whole of the top of the cake. So I'll show you that in a minute, okay? Put your almonds on. You see that? That's all the almonds on. So what we're going to do now, and a little trick to put in the oven when you're putting your cake in. So what I'm going to do is cover this up first because I don't want these almonds to burn. So I'll just put a bit of um, parchment paper over the top, okay? And then in the oven I will put a dish like this um, with some water in it. I've got some water here. And just put that on the bottom shelf and it makes a nice sort of steamy atmosphere. 
so your cake doesn't dry out on the top. But I will also just put a bit of parchment paper on these. And Sue back again. I just wanted to show you how I'm just going to put it in the oven right now. So I just went and um, found a bit of paper which I sort of folded over and I'm just going to cover it up, okay, on the top. So you're, you're going to put this in the oven for two and a half to three hours or until firm to the touch or like put the knife test in. If the knife comes out clean, it means your cake is done. Um, and then you need to put it on. So you've got to bake it 170 degrees or 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Mark three for two and a half to three hours. So quite a low temperature on the oven. So I'm gonna put it on the top shelf. I've put my tray of, co of water on the shelf underneath it, okay? And if you keep an eye on the water, just top it up. And then I will be taking the cover off um, at the last minute so that it can bake. But I'm doing it the opposite. It says to cook it first and then take the cover off. But I know that these almonds will probably burn if I, um, if I do it the other way around. So I'll see you, I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so it's going to be quite a while. So I'll show you the finished products when the cake is cooked. Okay, and it's cooled down as well so I can cut it. Okay, so see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Hello, Sue here again from Sue's Dog Bob Knife Kitchen with the cake, the Dundee cake. I've just literally taken it out the oven and it has taken so long to cook. There's the Dundee cake. I haven't taken it out yet. I've literally just taken it out the oven. It is now five to 10 in the evening. It has taken I put it in at half past six. Yeah, it's taken quite a long time to cook, but you have to make sure it's really, really cooked. It's really dense and you, you do not want it soggy in the middle. So hopefully it will come out of the tin now because I've literally just taken it out the oven. So I'm just going to tip it upside down on this um, wire rack here and I will show you the finished product. So. So we're just going to take off all this lovely paper that I've put on there with all my butter to stop it from sticking to the pan. So once I've done this, I'll turn it back around the other way. But make sure you take your cake out of the cake tin before it cools down. Really, really important. Ouch. And it's really, 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 really hot. So to so that's it let me see if i can turn it over so it's the right way up right ah there we have it so there is the dundee cake made so i haven't put the honey on the top yet so just let me do that while it is hot oh the honey's not here okay so we won't do that right now so, because it's so late at night now, it's taken me so long. I've been sitting here waiting for the cake to cook for the last, since I put it in at half past six or six o'clock, and it's taken till 10. So it's literally taken three hours or two and a half to three hours. So it's not lying when it tells you it takes two and a half to three hours, because it does. So just as long as you can, if you've got a timer on your oven, that would be great because you could just put the timer on but then you do need to take it out of the tin because if you let it go cold in the tin, you're going to find it hard to get out because the butter will go, um, you know, whatever fat you've got around it to keep it moist while it's cooking will um, go hard. So anyway, that's the wonderful Dundee cake. So I will cut a piece so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, so let me... Um, just slice it. It's going to be extremely hot because I literally just thought I better take it out of the oven. I better finish this video before I go to bed because I'm getting really tired now. So note to self to make your videos earlier in the day so you don't have to stay up all night because I'm usually in bed by now, not waking videos. But I thought I better. 
hurry up and make it. So I did cover it up with some, um, you know, paper and then I took it off and I kept the water in the bottom as well so that the cake would stay nice and moist while it was cooking. Whoa! And, whoa! And there is a beautiful slice. Oh, mmm, tastes lovely. Of the Dundee cake. There, there, there's the Dundee cake. So I hope you can see it. It's very, 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 very hot. But Dundee cake, you can warm it up in the oven and have it, you know, with some custard. If you want it as a pudding. In fact, I do that with most cakes. We normally have our cakes with either ice cream, cream or custard. And have them as puddings. So we don't just eat them as a cake. Sorry. I just need to eat these crumbs that are spilt on the worktop. Mmm. Anyway. Dundee cake. Done. You just need to glaze the top with some um, honey or marmalade or apricot jam. Warm it up in the microwave or in the oven, wherever and just glaze the top and it'll make it look really pretty especially if you've given it away as a um, gift make a nice gift for someone or if you're um, keeping it for Christmas you could um, wrap some nice ribbon around it and glaze the top and you could even sprinkle some icing sugar you can actually have it as a Christmas cake if you don't like Christmas cake you could actually just have it as a Christmas cake. But look how lovely that is. So that's the Dundee cake done. My partner will have a piece in a minute, this bit, and I will have a piece too. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. And tell all your friends and family about my channel. I'm sure there must be one video at least that would be of interest to somebody because I make loads of different videos about loads of different things food wise and some other bits and bobs that I also am interested in so please like my video and if you would like me to make anything for you leave a comment in the comments below and I will make it as long as it's not too expensive and um, is not stupidly outrageous within you know something enjoyable to make for me I would pick and choose which ones I made anyway but um, if you would like the ingredients for my Dundee cake please leave a comment below and I will put the ingredients up for you so you know exactly what the ratio of ingredients is it's a beautiful lovely smell coming from this cake now and it's not too heavy, it's not like a Christmas cake, it's a lot lighter than Christmas cake because you're using soft brown sugar in this, you're not using dark anything. So it's a lot different to Christmas cake and you're not using cinnamon and spices and nutmeg and stuff like that. So, and it doesn't have as much stuff in it as a, as a uh, fruit cake. So it's a lighter fruit cake if you know what I mean even though it's still got a lot of fruit in it it's still lighter not like um, Christmas cake with a lot richer but I will be making a Christmas cake recipe because I do want to show you how to make a Christmas cake if you would like well I want to make one anyway because I want one for when my family comes so I will be making a Christmas cake and I will be icing it and then I will make the little people and stuff <coughs> Sorry, the currents went down the wrong way. <coughs> anyway, thank you for watching my channel. I really need to go to bed now because it's really, really late and I'm really, really, really tired after making this video and sitting around for hours playing the piano, which I've also learned while we've been in lockdown. And I really, really love playing the piano. I learned to play it by myself. Um, I watched one tutorial and I just can play it by ear, it's really odd. Anyway, 
I've been playing tons of tunes and I'm really, really loving it and that's what I've been doing it for the past three hours while I've been waiting for this cake to cook. So, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed my video and I will stop rambling now and goodbye for now. Bye for now.